Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft doing another PVQ, another performance-based question. This one's going to be on firewalls. So let's take a look at this one. I had my team make this for me. Uh, let's see what we're working with here. So we got, looks like nine parts to this. You're a network security administrator. And you're setting up a new firewall on your network. You need to implement it to help your organization's security posture. You need to configure the firewall rules based on the following parameters provided to you by your manager. Allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic from any external IP address to the web server. Okay, 10.0.0.1. Allow SSH access from the internal network. That's a 192, okay. It's a class C network to the database server. Allow DNS queries from any device on the internal network to the DNS server. Allow SMTPS traffic from the internal network to the mail server. Okay, simple mail transfer protocol secure and deny all other traffic by default. All right, select the necessary IP address port or action based on the specified requirements. All right, so I guess we're using this table here. And what is the correct option for rule one source IP? Okay, so, all right, so this is basically like a, an ACL for a firewall and we have to determine what we want to put in there. Does that make sense? Uh, so let's see what this first rule is. We have tend source IP. We have to select that 10.0.0.1 over port 80. So those correct option for rule one source IP. So they said any, allow for any traffic. So that should be any, right? I think that should be any. Is any an option? All right. So that should be any. And then I assume these go in order. Rule one action. Right, okay, so these are just gonna go in order from the select. Let's just, I think that's fine. All right, so if we're allowing HTTP and HTTPS, we're gonna allow this also. So we did allow. And then correct option rule two destination IP. Destination IP was going to be, what is this? This is HTTPS. So this would also be 10.0.0.1 to the web server. So that's the web server. Okay. So it should be 10.0.0.1. Okay. All right. And let's see, three. That's the internal address to 0 0.2, which is what? A database server and we want to do SSH access so internal to database server TCP SSH okay so that's SSH yep that makes sense uh, so we would do SSH then which is port 22 so port 22 this is LDAP secure uh, these are these are not the right so this is SSH there, we got that for rule three port. And then now we're down to source IP for rule four, which is port 53, it's DNS. So where does it say DNS? All right, allow DNS queries from any device in the on the internal network to the DNS server. All right, so it's gonna be the internal network here, which should be this right here. So it's gonna be this one right here. That's gonna be our internal network. All right, and then from that internal network, select the port. And the, we're down here. Select from the internal network to the port. The action is gonna be allow. Allow any DNS queries. So that's allow. Block, deny, allow, any. Yeah, allow. It's either gonna be allow or deny. So block, that's gonna be a red herring there. Okay, so we have that, rule five here, allow SMTPS traffic from an internal network to the mail server. Okay, that's a, let's see what that one could be. So we have 143, that's IMAP, 995, that's POP3 secure, post office protocol secure, uh, 587, I think that's it. If I 
remember right, 636, that's LDAP secure. 993, that's IMAP secure. 25 is SMTP with not being secure. And 110 is POP, just regular POP, not secure. I'm pretty sure it's 587. Pretty sure it's 587. And if you ever have trouble memorizing IMAP versus IMAP secure, just as a sidebar, uh, IMAP is 143, and then the secure version also ends in a 3993. I know a lot of people get POP3 secure and IMAP secure mixed up. So we're going to pick uh, 587. All right. So we go from there. All right. And the last one here, we have two more. Source IP, any. Destination IP. What is this one? Deny all traffic by default. That's the last one we have left. Okay, so deny all traffic by default. That's going to be, should be any, 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 and then deny. So I'd pick any here. And then the next one, we're going to pick correct option rule six port. Port should be any. Not all, it would be any any port and then I think we should we should be good let's see how we do it all right great yeah so we did it that was really good let's see what they say here let's uh, view the questions uh, I want to see the explanation check these correct option rule one source IP we're asked to allow any for HTTP HTTPS traffic on to the web server which would happen over ports 80 and 443. That's, that's pretty good. I think it's a good explanation there. Correct option for the destination IP. Asked to allow any HTTP, HTTPS traffic. Yep, that, that's pretty standard. So that makes sense. Yeah, I think this is a, a pretty good representation of a question you could see on the Security Plus exam. Either you'll see these as multiple choice questions or you'll see this as a performance-based question. I've seen it being used as both, uh, or templates like this where you have multiple firewall rules to configure. So I think this is a good representation of what you could see on the real test and a good check on your knowledge. And of course, this and all of our Cybercraft performance-based questions are accessible in our course. Uh, so you know, the course is gonna have these and more performance-based questions for you. But yeah, let's see. Internal networking is communicate with DNS server uses port 53. Yep, so we'd allow that. And 587 was correct. That was That's a tricky one because basically all the mail uh, ports, all the possible ports for those mail protocols are listed out here. So that's a pretty good one to check your knowledge. You do need to differentiate, and it's the questions like this where you're going to have to really memorize those port numbers. It's very important. So definitely reference that port and protocol reference sheet we have at CybercraftTrain.com to help you memorize those port numbers because it's very important. And it's good to work with the port numbers and questions like this in the labs so you get an understanding of them and you can internalize them a little better rather than just memorizing from a list. But this is, a, I think, a really good PBQ, good representation of what you'll see on the test there, and uh, something that's very important to understand how to do these firewall rules. So great skill to learn, and this was, should be really helpful. So thanks so much for joining me here, and I hope this was a, a good PBQ, a good useful question to help uh, with your studies here. Of course, if you're interested in more PBQs, more practice questions, and if you like my teaching style, check out the Cybercraft course in the description. Our Security Plus course teaches you everything you need to know to pass the exam. You have over 36 hours of video lessons recorded by me. You get the official CompTIA materials. Everything you need, all the practice questions, practice exams, we have lots of materials for you available on CybercraftTraining.com to help you pass your Security Plus and any certification you're after. So we are partnering with ISACA, EC Council, CompTIA, all the uh, certification bodies to help you get your next certification. 
and get you certified. So if, if you need anything, please leave a comment, email info at cybercrafttraining.com or check out the course in the description to find out how you can get earn your next certification risk-free, hassle-free with our programs. So thanks so much for joining me again and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.